All righty. Uh, we head to Augusta. Mike Tirico, Sunday Night Football, play-by-play, calling the Masters for Sirius X. Where are you right now, Mike? Right now, Dan, I am in one of the studios for Sirius XM, which is in the press building at Augusta. So okay. I think we do the show from one studio down. By the way, is this the DP show now projecting that Embiid is yes. one of the MVP? Yes. Is this like it's like Kornacki on election night? We can now project? All the precincts aren't in yet, Mike, but uh, okay. we're, we're going we're to project right now that Joel Embiid is going to be the MVP. All right, give us an update Stop. on the weather. Uh, great today. Good tomorrow, uh, bad the rest of the week, cool and windy. And as you know, Dan, from your years being here, wind here is multiplied because it swirls and you have to be so precise to landing spots. So wind here is very tough and cool. Usually that brings in more players in the field and it's not about overpowering the golf course or for the big hitters having a big advantage. It becomes everything's a three shot par five. So if it's playing like that, those are the years we've seen Zach Johnson, Mike Weir, among others, win. So it may bring more guys into the mix come the weekend. What do you read into Tiger's comments? Which ones? About uh, the golf ball? About him? About, about him? Live, his about future? Him? Yes, his future. He's more of an uh, open book than he's ever been, Mike. No doubt, Dan. Remarkably re- reflective. And uh, Taylor Zarzer, who I'm working with on Sirius XM, did an interview with Tiger yesterday. And I was driving to the course this morning and heard it. And I was thinking the same thing that you just mentioned, remarkably reflective, you know, and, and I, I guess when you have to um, really go through all these major surgeries, you nearly died. Uh, you're going through all these major surgeries and all of the rehab, none of which we really know the lengths that he's gone to. You have to do all that just to be able to play again. But many people think you couldn't play again, uh, let alone all the back stuff. At some point, no matter how invincible you seem to be, it has to make you a realist. So I think he is very reflective, understanding that it takes a lot to play here. And if he's got one or two more or three more, whatever it is, to savor it and appreciate it. And it, it does make all of us, I think, feel old when we stop and say this is Tiger's 25th Masters. Because, wow. you know, it, it feels like not too long ago when we watched the early ones and then 97, of course. Yeah, I was there for his first one. Wow. It's crazy, isn't it? I know. And it used to be Tiger versus the field, Mike. And we right, would take right. Tiger. <laughs> you know, a lot. And and more often than not, be right. His winning percentage is still extraordinary. His winning percentage in the majors is out of this world. Uh, you, you just reflect on his career and the career of Jack Nicholas. And I, I saw them standing next to each other, Jack seated, Tiger standing, in the picture that came out from the Champions Dinner last night. And uh, it, it's just remarkable to see. Tiger set that Nicholas standard as his goal and almost got all the way there. Didn't get all the way there with the six green jackets and the 18 professional majors, but got pretty far along that path. And it's it's the one coolest thing I think about golf is that Nicholas played. He was inspired by Bobby Jones, had the chance to play with Hogan and then Palmer and Watson and Nicholas. And now they pass it on to Tiger and Tiger's passing it on to the next generation the connectivity of golf because the longevity of careers brings that history really to the surface, I think, better than other sports. Help us understand tension level, if there is tension between Liv and the PGA Tour. How big of a component is that going to be with your coverage this week? Boy, I thought it would be more from just the feel for the week, and I think it's been diffused pretty quickly. I think the guys got here, and it feels different. Now, maybe if the U.S. Open or the PGA was first, it might be a little more knife's edge and there may be a little more tension, but I think nobody wants to be the guy who was at the masters and made it about live versus the PGA tour and not the masters tournament. It just doesn't feel like the place to do it. And it sounds like from the early reports from the champions dinner last night uh, that the guys mixed in pretty well. And it wasn't an issue. There wasn't a kitty table for the live guys and everybody else got to sit (laughs) at another table, you know, uh, it sounds like the six Masters champs who were there um, were part of the evening, and it was there all in the name of honoring Scotty Scheffler, which is pretty cool. Okay. Aside from Tiger versus Phil on Sunday yeah. in the final group, I want, right. you, I want you to be program director here. Give me the okay. ideal twosome on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, um, th- there's a bunch because there are a lot of good guys right now. Like I'd love to see Scotty Scheffler trying to repeat 
let's see John Rahm trying to win here because he's got everything to win here. You'd love the nostalgia of those guys. But I would take Rory versus Jordan Spieth. Uh, uh, Rory going for the last leg of the career Grand Slam, the only one of the majors he hasn't won. Against a guy in Spieth who has that crossover magnetism that I think other guys don't. And, and you know what I'm talking about, Dan. Like, there are people who don't love golf, but they'll see Spieth and they'll stop and watch because they know there's an entire dramatic something. He's going to break somebody's phone, hit it off of somebody. <laughs> He's going to be in an impossible place. He's going to chip in and make three and just kind of have that aw shucks look about him, right? There's something about Jordan. You want to watch him hit his next shot. And I think Rory's got that star quality. Uh, along with everything he's done to try to keep the PGA Tour intact. Uh, Mike, for me, that Mike, would, that you got to have Sunday. Rory versus Patrick Reed on Sunday. Oh, you really? Do you want that? Now, now that who's who's not going to be rooting for Rory other than Patrick's friends? But, but nobody exactly. roots for Patrick Reed anyway. Even his friends That's probably don't. Yeah, <laughs> but we need a villain there. You you, you want to go that way? Yes. That's you. Yeah. You, you, okay. You how about this? How about yeah. Dustin Johnson and Rory? Yeah, but you know what, Dan? Like, does anybody dislike Dustin Johnson? Or does anybody dislike Cameron Smith? Most of the guys who are playing for Live or playing on the Live Tour, when they come back, it's like, yeah, you know, what did he ever do to you, right? Now, Patrick Reed has over a variety of years. I, I don't know. I might get sued here if I say anything about Patrick. <laughs> um, <laughs> over a variety of years, he, he has caused the ire of several for a variety of reasons. Always been very nice to me, but this is uh, <laughs> this has been told in courts over the years. But other than that, there's no villain amongst that. There's a villain in general with Norman, with Mickelson, and the idea of live. But by the way, look, competition's been great for America. Competition when when you were at CNN and we were at ESPN, you know, it was like okay, what what sports tonight do? You know what that that, that makes everybody better. And I think the existence of Live has made the PGA Tour better. Personally, just personally, where I sit, I had a hard time with the guys who helped their careers achieve where they got because of the PGA Tour, yeah. then turning around and publicly saying, I want the PGA Tour to be harmed or fail. That's the only place that I said, ah, you know what? To me, as a golf fan, that's not cool. Other than that, competition makes you better. I think the Tour is better today than it was 15 months ago because of the threat of live is greg norman there i i have not seen him uh he certainly wasn't at the champions dinner he didn't win the tournament i doubt he was invited <laughs> to come otherwise um i don't think that the 18 live tour members will be waiting around if one of the one of their brethren wins the title like if somebody shoots 75 74 and misses the cut I don't think they're going to hang for the weekend to welcome them off the 18th green. So while that sounded good, I, I don't, I don't see that happening. I hope it does. It'd be good theater, but I, I don't see that happening. And Fritzy had a joke. If you want to use it in your coverage on uh, Sirius yeah. XM that, uh, okay. He could see where, you know, some of the live players don't show up on Sunday because they only play 54. Mike. Just saying. <laughs> That's good. That, that is very good. Yeah. They, they, they will. We don't have guys finishing the masters on seven. No. <laughs> uh, like, like you have on the live tour and there, there will not be a concert right after, uh, that, that will not be it. Look, it's different. It's, um, it's a challenge to the system. Like every other, look, think, think of think of the uh, ABA and the three point shot, right? The NBA thought that was ridiculous. That half court shot that Jerry West hit in the in the finals was a two pointer to send the game to overtime, right? It would have been a three to win it back uh, if it was more recent. The ABA's ability to do that changed the game and impacted the game forever. So there are there are elements of stuff that can work. It's it just what are you playing for? Are you playing for a championship or are you just playing for cash? And it doesn't feel like you're playing for anything in a sport where what you're playing for and the legacy of the sport matters probably as much as any sport. But also, Mike, if you look at the live tour players, they got paid and they get to play in this major. How many majors are, are they going to be able to uh, play in each year? Dan, that's the big story with those guys. The numbers are going to dwindle because they're not getting world ranking points. Uh, unless you have other ways in, you're not going to find your way in. So each major has a certain qualification that if you finish in the top 12 or the top eight, you get invited back next year. To me, that's the story with the live players on Sunday. Uh, are you going to earn a spot into next year's Masters or somewhere else if you win by the exemptions that come with 
your finish. So the, to me, that's one of the small stories, but it'll have the most impact on individual guys whose uh, ability to play in these majors is going to run out as their world championship points run out and also their qualifications for winning the events that they won. Guys like DeChambeau winning the U.S. Open, et cetera, et cetera, and Kepka as well. What uh, What's your best score at Augusta? I don't know. I, I'd have to go look. I've only oh played a few times. Oh, my. Come on. No, I've, if I've, you I've knew only it, played a few times. If you knew it. No, if it was really good, I would know it. Yes. Right away. <laughs> yes. Dan, Dan, Dan it, was, it was all about, what's yours? 81. 81. Wow. And what, did you find, and for the, you know, for the people who have had the op- opportunity to play, from the members' tees, it's very playable. It's not very long. And it's, it's really, if you have a good putting day or you're accurate you have a, and a great caddy, you have a chance to put up a good score. But we played wherever you could play from the tips. We played from the tips. Oh, you did? Yeah, we eight, wow. 18 played from the tips. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, but, you know, there were a couple of holes. But my caddy, uh, caddy uh-huh. for Seve. And, oh, wow. What and a he, story. And he was wondering. I got traded on the first tee, Mike. Because the Four. caddies were betting. Oh, and, oh. and and I got trade. I hit my tee shot, and and uh, my caddy traded for me, and so they had mon- they had money on us that's, while we're playing. It's the, but it's yeah. the best, it's the best part of it. I I will say that this did happen to me at Augusta. Closest I came to an ace in my life was here at six. I I, I came. I was playing with Jade Billis. As a matter of fact, it came this close to an ace. That was the uh, that was that was the golf moment of my life at Augusta. National. Now, what do you do? You have to buy. Drinks for everybody in the clubhouse? I don't know how that works at Augusta. Sadly, I never got to find out. Uh, yeah, and you don't even remember what your score was, Mike. No, I don't. I don't do that, Dan. I don't walk Paulie, around talking about. Paulie, it. would you get a hold of Billis? We're already on it. Billis will have the scorecard because he probably shot a you know pretty good score. He, no, he 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 did play well that day. I have the picture of how close the ball came. The, the caddy said, "Mr. Mike, we you can't have your phone out, but I got to take a picture of how close you came." And I do. It's this close. It's painful. Thanks for bringing up a nice memory for me, Dan. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Is that fire real behind you, by the way? Uh, it's yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's real warm. <laughs> when I when I worked the uh, the Thursday Friday coverage with ESPN that Scotty Van Pelt does now. Uh, the question I would get from people more like, is the fireplace in Butler Cabin real? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is real. It is. Real. But so see, you is. should have gotten like some marshmallows. Maybe oh, made some s'mores. That yeah, that 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 would be great. Come on, to Butler Cabin. Excuse me, Curtis and I are just making some s'mores here. <laughs> That'll go. What they you, they have a great sense of humor down there, Mike. What what do you think about the whole location of thirteen today, <laughs> Curtis? Hang on, I don't want to roast this marshmallow to it. I, I will say this, Dan, for folks in all seriousness, and you know this because you've been here working and you've had the opportunity to come as a guest, uh, media member, player, caddy, pro. Uh, guest uh, patron, as you know, we like to say here, all of it. It's really hard to get here. When you get here, there's no place in sports where you get treated better. They treat everyone great. The press building here, they should buy fiber, bring every sporting event into here and have it covered from here. Uh, they, they do everything really, really well. And I will say, coming all back right, here. All right, Mike. And, okay. No, I'm all serious. Right. Yeah, People trying don't to, know that, Dan. Trying to disagree? play on Monday, aren't you, Mike? No, I'm not. I'm going home on Monday. I've been here for 11 days. Do you, don't you agree, though? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it's an awesome place. It yeah. really is. It, yeah. It's one of those you do pitch yourself when you get here. It, it is pretty cool. You, a, you understand why people get emotional about it. So have I, a pimento sandwich on me, Mike. Okay. You want me to send one to you? No. Okay. I never had a Good pimento cheese sandwich until I went to Augusta. And then I went, where's, where's, this, where's this been in my life? <laughs> the best thing, $10, beer, sandwich, and chips. Can't and you can come well. back with change. Yeah. You come back with change. Not, Where else? Not bad. Do you know I took a piece of turf from Augusta when I played? Did you like try to put it in your yes, lawn? Yes, I did. I brought How'd it back. Out for you? I brought it back in Tupperware. And my wife goes, What are you doing? And I said, I I I brought some grass back from Augusta. And I, and I was gonna try to see if I could plant it. It didn't work. And uh, it didn't yeah. I've got I've got a quick one for you. Okay. Last game at Old Tiger Stadium. Uh, they were handing out cups of dirt from the outfield warning track, and we were building our house in Michigan. So my wife grew up a Tiger fan. We have a cup of dirt from the warning track at Tiger Stadium, left field, in the foundation of our house in Michigan. There you go. Hmm. 
Well, there you go. Thanks for topping me, Mike. Thanks for topping me. Nice to talk to you again. I miss you. Good to talk to you. That's Mike Chirico. Mike will be the lead play-by-play boy, Sirius XM Masters broadcast, tomorrow through Sunday at uh, 2 Eastern each day. Also, he'll uh, he'll be part of Golf Channel's comprehensive live from the Masters studio coverage as well, starting this week at noon Eastern.